It's the preview show brought to you by JW Betting and TVSportsBlog.com. Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna podcast. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeon. This show is brought to you by JW Betting and TV Sports Blog. Dot com. Uh, on this edition, we'll be looking ahead to that huge clash up at Old Trafford on Monday night. Arsenal travel to Manchester United. Um, both teams, uh, you know, having questions asked about them at the moment. Both teams, um, you know, have, have a divide in their supporters when it comes to the manager. So lots in common between the two sides at the minute. Um, now, as an Arsenal fan, you know, I, I don't often feel confident going up to Old Trafford. But for me, this is a game that Arsenal should win. I think that Arsenal's firepower is far more superior than that of Manchester United's. Yes, our defence is, is is questionable at, at the best of times. But, you know, we've been handed a boost by the fact that Bella and Tierney and Holding are at least available. Now, we don't know how long they'll be able to play. We don't know whether Rob Holding will get a start. We, we heard from Unai Emery in his press conference after the Carabao Cup game the other night that he didn't feel Hector Bellerin would be ready to play 90 minutes, but he didn't say anything about Kieran Tierney. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see how Tierney and Holding feature in Unai Emery's plans at least uh, this weekend. So a boost for Arsenal uh, from a defensive standpoint. And when you think about it, you know, we've been giving Arsenal a lot of stick about their defensive fragilities uh, over the course of the season. But when those three return, and it's probably three of your back four um, that is going to change. So you'd hope uh, from an Arsenal fan's perspective that that would make some difference. I'm still a little bit sceptical because I feel like Arsenal's defensive problems are, are a wider issue in the sense that I think our system uh, it doesn't quite work. I think that the, the cover of the midfield isn't really uh, effective enough and that is, of course, isolating defenders and causing them to have a much harder time than they need to. So, you know, I think the issues are, are pretty widespread from Arsenal. But on this edition, I'm going to run through my predicted lineup. Um, and I'm going to run through some statistics uh, leading up to the game before we talk to Manchester United fan Rodri Giggs. Now, lots of you will recognise Rodri from that fantastic Paddy Power advert, which I'm sure most of you have seen. Uh, if you haven't, type it in, Rodri Giggs, Paddy Power advert. You'll love it. Um, so, uh, yeah, Rodri Giggs is going to be joining me and we're going to be getting the Manchester United perspective uh, as well on things. So uh, really interesting show lined up for you. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're listening via the audio, please, please do hit the like button and leave us a review if you're on iTunes. That is so, so important. Uh, and of course, check out uh, jwbetting.com and tvsportsblog.com. The links are in the description below right let's start with the head-to-head -head. Uh, Manchester United versus Arsenal the two teams have met 54 times in the Premier League um, Manchester United have won 24 Arsenal have won 14 Manchester United have won 16 at home um, and eight on the road Arsenal have won 11 at home and just three on the road so Arsenal have only won at Old Trafford three times in the Premier League era so you know the record up there is not great. Um, but like I said, as an Arsenal fan, you've got to be feeling confident this time around. Um, based on, on on sort of the two teams, the firepower, etc. But there's this inner feeling, isn't there, as a Guna, that when you go to Old Trafford, no matter how bad they are, you know, you're never confident. And, and there's that little feeling in the back of my mind that, you know, we may still go there and lose. You know, it's it's a horrible feeling to have because... When you look at the two sides, in my opinion, Arsenal should have the upper hand. But it's Old Trafford, under the lights, midweek game. Um, it's going to be difficult, in my opinion. Uh, it's not going to be easy. I'll be over the moon if Arsenal come away uh, from that one with a comfortable victory. Now, if we look at the recent meetings between the two sides, um, the last one was at the Emirates Stadium on the 10th of March. Arsenal ran out 2-0 winners that day. Um, if we look at the other meeting that season, it was uh, Manchester United 2 Arsenal two up at Old Trafford. So Arsenal took four points off Manchester United last season, which is pretty impressive in my opinion. Uh, the season before, Manchester United took six points off of us. They beat us at Old Trafford by two goals to one uh, and they uh, won at the Emirates by three goals to one 
Um, of course, Arsene Wenger's last season in charge, that one, uh, wasn't pretty that day. I remember it clearly. Uh, and the meeting before that, seen as we're looking at the last five, was another Arsenal 2-0 win over Manchester United at the Emirates Stadium. So um, if we look at the the head-to-head in the last five games, there's two Arsenal wins, two Manchester United wins and a draw. So it's pretty evenly split uh, in recent times. Uh, so uh, read of that what you will. If we look at the current form guide, um, Arsenal are on the better form, of course. Arsenal have lost just once this season away to Liverpool, a game which, in truth, uh, we expected to lose. Manchester United, though, have been beaten at home by Crystal Palace and also lost on the road to West Ham. Uh, Add to that a draw uh, at St Mary's and a draw at Wolves. It's not been a great start for United, just the one win uh, so far. So there's a chance for Arsenal to open a little bit of breathing space between themselves and one of their rivals for the top four. Uh, Season so far, Manchester United currently sit in eighth place. Arsenal in fourth. United have won two. Arsenal have won three, as we've already said. Both teams have drawn twice. Arsenal just the one defeat to their name, whereas Manchester United have suffered two. Uh, In terms of goals scored per match on average, Arsenal are touching on 1.83, which is nearly two goals a game. Manchester United a little closer to the one mark, 1.33. Average goals conceded per match. Well, Manchester United lead on that. They've just conceded an average of one goal per match, whereas Arsenal, it's 1.67. Arsenal have only managed the one clean sheet, whereas United have managed two. In terms of chances created, Arsenal are creating a lot more chances than Manchester United at the moment. 1.67 1.67 compared to their 1.17 per game. Now, these stats are from the Premier League's official website. So if you fancy checking them out, uh, please do head over to premierleague.com and click on the fixture and it brings you up lots of stats and interesting facts. Now, in terms of uh, the top players between these two sides, uh, as far as statistics go, in terms of goals, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang leads the way with six. Daniel James, a bit of a surprise package this season, came to United with high hopes, but I don't think anybody outside of United realised what a talent this young man was. So Daniel James uh, is in second place with three goals, uh, joint with uh, Marcus Rashford. In terms of assists, Danny Ceballos, Ainsley Maitland-Niles and Paul Pogba are all on three. Uh, in terms of passes, Victor Lindelof leads the way for Manchester United. He's made 403 passes. Harry Maguire second on 383. And Matteo Genduzzi sits third on 367. In terms of tackles, Aaron Wan-Bissaka leads the way. I don't think anybody's surprised by that big money signing this summer. Uh, Aaron Wan-Bissaka, a player with lots and lots of potential. Ainsley Maitland-Niles sits second, surprisingly, with 12. But the difference between second and first is huge. Uh, 12 compared to 31 tackles and Andreas Pereira sits third. Uh, So those are the stats and uh, facts that um, we're going to touch on uh, in today's uh, preview. Uh, Now I'm going to go on to give you my predicted lineup from an Arsenal point of view. So in terms of my predicted lineup, this is what I've gone with. And I want to be clear, this is a predicted lineup, not necessarily what I would do. Um, I'm going with a predicted lineup because I, I've been trying to do like a mix and match over the last few weeks of what I would do and what I think Unai is going to do. Um, instead, I'm going to give you my predicted lineup and then I'm going to tell you what I would do differently. Um, so, if anything, uh, of course. So, Burn Leno in goal, uh, a back four of Kieran Tierney at left back, David Lewis and Rob Holding in the middle, and then uh, Ainsley Maitland Niles uh, on the Uh, right-hand side. I think he'll come back in the side, serve the suspension, of course, in the Carabao Cup game, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Then if you look in the middle of the park, I think it's going to be Granite Xhaka uh, as part of a two-man pivot with Matteo Genduzzi, Danny Ceballos ahead of them, uh, Pepe on the right flank, Aubameyang through the middle, and I think that Mesut Ozil will get the nod. Um, I think that Ozil will be involved. Um, If Ozil is involved, you could see us revert into a sort of diamond shape um, at, at periods in the game with Aubameyang and Pepe leading the line uh, sort of as a front two with Arsenal looking to play on the counter-attack. And the reason I say that is because the last big game we went to away from home was, of course, Anfield. And that's what Unai Emery went with. Did it work? Probably not. Um, but I've 
got a suspicion that he might try that again. I could be completely wrong. It's really, really hard to predict Unai Emery, but that's what I think he'll do. Uh, I think this will be the personnel, but the shape remains to be seen, whether uh, it will be a diamond, whether it will be uh, a 4 2 Three one or whatever, which I thought worked really well the other night, but of course, the personnel is going to be different uh, at Old Trafford. Now, what would I do differently? Um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people screaming out for Bukayo Saka to start the game, or Reese Nelson. I don't know about that. Um, I'm not entirely sure if Bukayo Saka starting at Old Trafford would be maybe one step too far for the young man. It's great, you know, giving these guys the opportunities, and and he's taking his opportunities. Hats off to him. But, you know, he played on Tuesday night. Um, I guess the only thing working in, in his favour is that there is a long recovery period, isn't there, between Tuesday and Monday. It's not like you're playing on a Wednesday and you're playing on the Saturday. So there is quite a long recovery period and that uh, may influence Unai Emery to, to pick a, a slightly different team to this, um, which is, of course, uh, what I think he might do. But again... I've never got an Unai Emery team 100% spot on. I'm always sort of one one player away, uh, which is a little bit frustrating, but that's Unai Emery's way. He's a tinker man, uh, the modern day tinker man. Uh, what would I do differently? Um, I think that Unai Emery made it clear in his press conference that Bellerin isn't ready to start, so I wouldn't change anything there. Uh, some people would argue Socrates over Lewis, not for me. Um, Tierney would definitely start, I think. There's an argument maybe Torreira should play. Um, but I think that Unai Emery will, rightly or wrongly, uh, probably wrongly given his current form, persist with Granit Xhaka. I think he'll do that. I think that Genduzi will continue uh, because his his performances, at least for a half a game, uh, have been really really good. Pepe cost a lot of money. Hasn't really pulled up any trees yet, in my opinion. I thought he was poor for the most part against Aston Villa. Had Aubameyang not given him the penalty. Probably would have left the pitch that day having not done anything. Jury's still out for me on Pepe, but we've got to give him time. We've got to allow him to settle. Um, so I think he'll play as well. Um, and, and I guess it's really just that that other position that the that I've got Ozil sitting in. Um, do you go with Ozil? Do you go with an out-and-out -out wide man? I don't know. Um, it, it's a really difficult one. Me personally, I would probably go with Ozil. On the basis that he can have a sort of free roll and drift sort of around the pitch and pick up pockets of space and hopefully feed uh, Aubameyang because I feel like without an Ozil in there, we don't necessarily have enough creativity. Sabios gives you that, um, but mm, Sabios on his own maybe isn't quite enough um, considering we're playing a team who are notoriously bad at defending. Well, no, that's, that's not right, actually. They're not bad at defending. But a team that I feel we should be taking the game to. That's the way I should have put that, um, to be honest. But yeah, that's that's what I'd go with. Um, that's what I th And that's what I think Emery's going to do as well. Um, so let me know what you guys think about the team that you're seeing in front of you. For those of you watching, it's on your screen right now. I'll just run for it quickly one more time for those listening on the audio. It's Leno in goal. Maitland-Niles holding Lewis and Tierney across the back line. Xhaka, Genduzi, Sabayos, Pepe, Ozil, Aubameyang. Uh, so let me know your thoughts on that. Be interesting to hear uh, what you guys have to say on that. Right, we're going to take a short break. And uh, when we return, uh, I'm going to be talking to Manchester United fan Rodri Giggs and getting his perspective uh, on the game up at Old Trafford. Welcome to the show, Rod, Rod Giggs, mate. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on. First of all, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Yeah, as we speak before, we come on. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, raining here, so it's not not a great day. But yeah, I'm feeling good. <laughs> good to hear. Where's well, England? We should be used to it by now, like you said. <laughs> well, Manchester, we should be definitely Manchester should be used. But like I say, never never get used to this rain. It's absolutely bucketing down. Yeah, uh, it's horrible, isn't it? Rod, uh, before we get started, before we talk Man United, I want to congratulate you on that fantastic uh, TV advert. I don't know if I've spoken to you since, but I really loved that. I thought it was brilliant. It was genius. Um, so well done on that uh, from all of us here at the podcast. Um, Rod, I want to get your thoughts on Manchester United and what you think seems to be the issue at the moment. Because, you know, Manchester United, similarly to Arsenal in a way, uh, are not sort of playing at their maximum you know there's questions being asked about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer 
from your perspective, what do you think's gone wrong at United and, and what do you think needs to change? Well, I think he's in the process of change at the minute. It's just like, like I said to people before, it's, it probably get worse before it gets better. You know, there's a massive change that needs to be done. There's, there's managers that have been in and out. People saying is Ollie the right person? Well, at the minute he is because he's bringing the right people and he's getting out, getting out the right people. So, is he tactically? Inept, or is he tactically good enough to, to be managing it? That, that remains to be seen. But at the minute, we, we're struggling. You know, at the start of the season, we're looking at Arsenal, look at United. I think we're like kind of in the same position, or although the different positions, like Arsenal probably needed to strengthen their defence, and we probably need to strengthen our midfield. But, you know, Arsenal seem to have had the better start, or look like the, the better team at the minute, and, and we seem to be struggling. When I look at Manchester United, and I had this conversation with a few friends of mine that are United fans, you know, I didn't really rate Romelu Lukaku. I always maintained that from the day he signed at Manchester United that he probably wasn't a sophisticated enough striker to lead the line of a club like Manchester United. But what I will say is he is somebody that would have got you 20-odd goals in a season. And have Manchester United struggled to replace that? Because I don't see Rashford... Martial and, and, and the rest of the youngsters being able to produce that sort of output. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. And, you know, like, you can't blame... Well, you, you kind of can blame the manager, but it's the people upstairs as well. They knew they didn't want Ramon Lukaku at the start of the season. They were um and an hour and over five million. They, 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 they're boasting about profits last year. I mean, last week... It's one of the biggest clubs in the world, and they're, they're, they're arguing about five, ten million pounds. They should have got him out to start pre season and replaced him. Now that they haven't replaced him, and we seem to be struggling for all that 20, 25 goals a season. Because Rashford is not the man who's going to get you that goals at the minute. Marshall, possibly, if he stayed fit. But he's out a minute. And Mason Greenwood, you can't hang your hat on a 17-year-old, even though he will be a top-class player for Manchester United. You just can't hang your hat on a 17-year-old. So I'm right in saying that similar to Arsenal, you know, people are not happy with the way the ownership are running the club with the people upstairs, Ed Woodward in particular. We've had that sort of issue. We've still got that sort of issue, in my opinion. Some have been sort of turned away from from the protests by the fact that we spent a bit of money in the summer. But I mean, from a Manchester United perspective, the general feeling I'm guessing is that the problems are mainly from upstairs. And until that changes, not much else will change. Well, it's getting better, but then you 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 bring in people and, and put like Patrice Ever is he the, would he be the right person? You know, he's spouting his mouth off saying he would bring this player in, he would bring that player. You know, it's all right someone doing it, but you know, these it's difficult to 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 get these players in, especially if they don't want to come or they're running an hour in. Why would you want to bring spend seventy odd million pound when a player that he's he's like mm, mm, like oh, you want someone to say yeah, I want to be there, I want to be in your plans or what? And you want to get that vibe. They obviously didn't get that vibe off Dubai alone, and that's why he didn't come. So, yeah. But yeah, there's definitely issues that upstairs, you know, um and an hour and over, like I say, five, ten million pounds when you could have got these deals all over and done with a month before and, and got the people you wanted in to replace them. But yeah, it's, it's just, uh, you know, they've done great by the people they've brought in. Daniel James has definitely improved the team, Van Bazaka has definitely improved the team and Harry Maguire has definitely improved the team, so the signings he's brought in have been A+, plus. it's just uh, he's just left himself bare with the players that he's, he's let go So uh, you've been pleased with, obviously Maguire and uh, Wan Bissaka were the two high profile ones because of the, the amount of money that sort of went on them and you know, it was clear that Manchester United needed to strengthen in those particular positions how would you say Harry Maguire's got on sort of in isolation? Because there was lots of talk about him, the most expensive defender. Um, I personally think that United paid over the odds for him, I think. But that's not because, uh, you know, United are to blame. I think that there's just a Premier League premium that comes with these type of players now. But how have you sort of rated his start to his Manchester United career? With, with the with the fee, it's always been the same with, with English clubs buying off English clubs. The, the price goes up. Remember, we play, we overpaid for Michael Carrick back in the day. We overpaid for Berbatov. We've always overpaid for, and, and it's something that we needed. Has yeah, is the way he started. He's been steady. He's not pulled up any trees, but he's not been really bad. So he's been steady. He's made players around him look better. I Lindelof, you know, 
David De Gea should seems to settle down now. He's 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 sorted his deal out, and yeah, he, like I say, he's not pulled up any trees, but you know, he, he I'm pretty sure he, he was kicking himself because he should have scored on the weekend. It was a pretty easy chance. It was, a, it was in a six yard box. He, he hits the anywhere up in the sky or above the keeper. It's a goal. He's probably pretty much hit it straight at him. He'll probably be disappointed with that. But like I say, defensively. Yeah, he's been sound. He's, 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 like I say, he's not pulling me trees, but he's not been bad. Yeah, brilliant stuff. From an outside perspective, watching uh, the Carabao Cup action <coughs> the other night, Manchester United were, of course, taken to penalties um, by Rochester. Did, did you at any point think... Like, are you at the kind of point now where you're thinking Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is one or two or maybe ten games away from the sack? Do you feel like his job is really on the line now? Uh, I, I personally, I don't. But you know, in the world we live in, you never know. They could get nervous. But you know, if you if you looked, if you probably asked the, the most sane Manchester United fans, you've got to give the bloke at least a year, two years. He's doing the right things. He knows the club. He's bringing the right players out. For me, he's getting the right players out and bringing the right players in. So you've got to give him chance. He's not even been there a year. And you know, this is a great Manchester United, the tradition and all that baloney that goes with it. And if you've got the tradition, you keep you stay with your managers and stick by them, and give them the time and give them the funds that needed to be changed. I mean, it is a massive job. It is a massive job. Is he personally the right person? Will he probably end up staying there long term? Probably not. But I would still give him the time because, like I say, the players he's brought in and the players got out, they've been spot on. Absolutely. And it was Rochdale. Sorry, not Rochester. I don't even know where I got that from. Too early yeah, Rochdale. That was just, you know, it was, it was, it, it, when I looked at the team and then, yeah, it was, it, we should be blowing teams like that, especially at Old Trafford. But, you know, if you haven't got someone at the top of the, top of the, or just putting the ball in the back of the net, it, then you, you struggle and someone who can unlock the doors. And, and that's probably two key areas that we're probably missing. And, and really, we shouldn't be at the size of the club we are. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Rod, how do you see this one going? I, I'm an Arsenal fan. I'm never confident going to Old Trafford, no matter how bad United are, because it's a place that we simply don't win at. We we have a terrible record up there. Um, how are you feeling ahead of this one? Are you confident that United can take the points? Well, it's, it's, it's a 50-50 one, isn't it? But if you're judging off the, the start of the season, you'd probably see Arsenal have the, the, the better, season, better start. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, like you say, it's, it's an Arsenal-United game. All the big players will be back in, in show, or, or the, i.e. the supposed big players, and, and see if they turn up. But, you know, it'd be dangerous. Be, be worried about with Arsenal's front three because they look dangerous. And, yeah, and yeah, it's, it's going to be a good game. We'll look forward to it. But, like I say, you could pick names out of that who's going to win. But then again, it could be a boring, boring nil-nil draw. Yeah, absolutely. We've had a few of them in, in the past, haven't we? If you offered me that now, I'd take it. I'd take it. And Arsenal oh, would you? Sheet, would you really? Like? Yeah. Would you? I would take it. I'll take a clean sheet any day with it. Those are few oh, and no, far I between. No, definitely not. <laughs> we are the away side, though. I get, if it was at home, I wouldn't. So I, I get your Yeah, well, it depends well. who, who starts. Maybe if, if Marsh, Rashford looks like he's out. But if Marshall's back, then we'll play Greenwood again. I don't know. He's lucky. He's looking good, but you can't keep on play these seventeen-year-olds because you burn them out. And, he, and Mason Green was going to be a top, top player. Yeah, interesting stuff, Rod. Thank you so much, mate. Really, really appreciate your time. I know you're really, really busy. Do you want to let our listeners know how they can follow you on social media? Yeah, me. Um, Twitter's at Rod James Giggs, and yeah, anytime, Harry, no problem. Brilliant. Thanks very much, mate. And we'll speak again very soon. Have a good weekend, pal. All the best, mate. Cheers. That brings us to the end of another edition of the Chronicles of Aguna. It's the preview show. It's been brought to you by JW Betting and TVSportsBlog.com. Don't forget to hit the subscribe, hit the like button and check those two websites out too. Links in the description and we'll be back on Tuesday to review the game with former Arsenal striker Jeremy Ali Adier. So until then, take care. Up the Arsenal. <laughs>